Hey what's up guys, OSJ here with another video and today we will be looking at 10 Amiga sequels that never lived up to the original game. As with the C64 sequels video, I'm sure that we all at some point have played a game and loved it and then heard that the sequel was coming out and rushed out and bought it on the merit of the original game. Sometimes it's paid off, but a lot of the times software houses shoveled a load of crap out quick to capitalise on the original game's success and that's what this video is all about. Not all crap, but definitely not what we expected. I've ordered these by how I rate the sequel compared to the original game and then done a sort in XL, worst the best. So sit back, grab a drink, relax and watch 10 Amiga sequels that never lived up to their predecessors. Kicking this off we have Cannon Fodder 2. Now the original Cannon Fodder was an absolute belter of a game. That mix of cute graphics, dark humour and challenging gameplay was irresistible. It was like playing with your old toy soldiers. If your toy soldiers could die in horrible ways and make you feel guilty about it, Cannon Fodder 2 isn't a bad game mind, it's actually pretty good, but it's a bit like if you go to see your favourite comedian for the second time and they're doing mostly new material but you can't help wishing that they do some of their old jokes. The new settings and enemies are alright but they feel a bit gimmicky and the surprise factor is gone. We all know what to expect now. It's still a good laugh but it just goes to show that lightning doesn't always strike twice. Desert Strike Return to the Gulf was a proper gem on the Amiga. That blend of action and strategy in a military setting was addictive as anything. You'd start playing and before you knew it, it was 3 in the morning and you had school the next day. Jungle Strike wasn't a bad game by any means, but it just couldn't quite capture the magic of Desert Strike. Yeah, they added new vehicles and all that, but sometimes it felt like they were trying too hard. It's like when a band releases a brilliant debut album and then tries to recreate it for the second. It might be good, but it's missing that spark that made the first one special. Space Harry on the Amiga did a decent job of bringing that manic arcade experience home. It was fast, it was colourful and it captured that oh my god everything's coming at me at once feeling of the original. Then Space Harrier 2 comes along and it's like they've taken a step backwards. The graphics aren't as impressive and the gameplay doesn't feel as smooth as the original part. It's like they were so focused on making a sequel that they forgot to make it better. It's a bit like when your local pub changes hands and the new owners think they can improve things but they just end up making the beer worse and putting the prices up. Now this one's a bit of a weird one. Ghosts and Goblins actually came to the Amiga after Ghouls and Ghosts, despite being the original arcade game. But when it did arrive, it was a proper treat. Hard as nails, mind you, but that was all part of the charm. Ghouls and Ghosts should have been an improvement, but it ended up feeling a bit off. Yeah, it looked prettier, but sometimes it felt like style over substance. The gameplay just didn't have that tight, challenging feel of the original. It's like they focused so much on making it look nice, they forgot to make it feel nice to play. Just goes to show, doesn't it? All the fancy graphics in the world can't make up for some solid gameplay. Lemmings 2 The Tribes was a brilliant sequel. It took everything we loved about the suicidal green haired fellas and ramped it up. New skills, new tribes, tons of variety. It was like lemmings on steroids in the best possible way. Then we got all new world of lemmings and it's well, it's not bad but it's not great either. They have gotta made everything ill 3D style with bigger lemmings and it just doesn't feel right. It's like they've taken out cute little pixel pals and inflated them like balloons. And the pure puzzle solving joy of the earlier games, it's there but it's hiding under all the unnecessary changes. Sometimes newer isn't always better. Gauntlet 2, now that's a proper sequel. It took everything we loved from the original dungeon crawler and give us just more of it. More monsters, more mazes, more of the addictive multiplayer action that had us all shouting at each other. But then Gauntlet 3, the final quest comes along and it's like they've decided to fix what wasn't broken. They've gone and slapped an isometric view on it and tried to make it all RPG like. It's not awful, but it's lost the fast paced action that made Gauntlet great. It's like going to your favourite chippy and finding out they're doing sushi. It's alright, but it's not what you came for, is it?
Remember Paper Boy? Of course you do. The Amiga part of the arcade classic was a proper bit of fun. Yeah, it was frustrating as hell sometimes, but in that just one more go kind of way. Then, Mindscape rolls up with Paper Boy 2, and it's as welcome as a paper round on a rainy Sunday morning. Sure, they added a Paper Girl option, but that's about the only good thing I can say about it. The gameplay feels clunky, and the charm of the original has gone missing. Sometimes you should just leave things well alone. Ah, California Games. This Epix Classic was the epitome of cool back in the day. Surfing, skating, BMX, it was a perfect game to show off your Amiga to your mates. Even if you were rubbish at it, you still look cool playing it. Then along comes California Games 2 and it's about as cool as your dad trying to do a kickflip. The events aren't half as fun. The controls feel like you're trying to guide a shopping trolley with a broken wheel and it's lost the charm of the original. It's like they tried to bottle that California magic again and ended up with a bottle of flat roller cola instead. Next up we've got Chaos Engine 2. The original Chaos Engine was a proper game. Menegear gave us a brilliant bit of steampunk madness that had us all hooped. The graphics were beautiful and the sound was spot on and that co-op gameplay bloody brilliant. So Renegade decided to give us a sequel. Should have been a slam dunk, right? Well, not quite. The Chaos Engine 2 isn't totally rubbish, but it's like they forgot what made the first one great. They've gone and made everything all cartoony, which doesn't fit the vibe. And don't get me started on the gameplay changes. It's like they thought, you know what this game needs? It needs to be less fun. Sometimes lads, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now, the worst sequel of all, we have Sidewinder 2. Now the original Sidewinder wasn't exactly setting the Amiga world on fire, but it was a decent little shoot em up. It had that fast paced action that we Amiga owners loved, even if it wasn't breaking any new ground. Then, Virgin Master Tronic comes along with Sidewinder 2, and bloody hell did they drop the ball on this one. It's like they took everything that was kinda fun about the first game and chucked it out the window. The controls feel like you're trying to steal a drunk elephant. Level design is about as inspired as a wet cardboard box, and it just lacks any sort of charm. It's a prime example of a company thinking, hey, the first one sold okay, let's churn out another one quick. Big mistake. And there you have it guys, 10 Amiga sequels that couldn't quite live up to their predecessors. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with this list, or if there are any other Amiga sequels that you think deserve the spot. And, are there any sequels that you thought were better than the original, because I'll be doing a video on that soon too. Please remember to drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Oh, and if you would like to become a Patreon like these fine folks going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel where you can pledge for as little as $1. That will get you perks like your name in the Amiga Crack Draw, end credits, video requests, giveaways and more in the future. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out. <laughs>